Hi, I'm Dale from Glenally Reads. I'm doing this video to answer some of the questions that people have been emailing me. Uh, main questions are about fundamental pitch of the chanters, why it's important, how do we find it out, and pitching of the reads to suit the chanters. Um, both these things are important and for some reason my explanations, uh, my written explanations are obviously fairly poor because I keep getting the same questions. So I'm going to do this video now. I'm using two basic channels. I'm using a, a new McLeod and an old McLeod because the read I've done, the, I'm using this example as one of the clients asked me to make for this particular uh, McLeod charter. It's an odd charter. The B hole is smaller than the A and the C. Very unusual for that to be the case. Um, obviously it worked. It's reasonable to believe that every charter that came from any manufacturer worked. It was in tune um, at a pitch with a read at some stage we just don't know what that pitch is and what that read was uh, manufacturers don't tell us or well, a couple do Shepard sort of does he we know he's got a 480 and we know he's got a, a, a classic 3 and the classic 3 is 476 478 hertz so we know that the 480 is above that um, Murray Henderson is another one he, he tends to put figures down which is good but and I understand why you wouldn't, it's sort of commercial suicide. If I'm looking for a 480, a 478 Chana, and yours is listed as 476, so I'm probably not going to buy it over 2 hertz. Um, and I could get those 2 hertz out of reads if I, if I knew what I was doing. If I was a good read man, I have no trouble at all. But that's probably why people don't list um, the fundamental pitch of their chanters and which reads they specifically use. Um, and we see that with the bands. So, well, champions use um, one make of chanter and a different make of read, whereas the person who makes a chanter also makes extremely good reads. But that band use, chooses to use something different, and that'll be because their read person decides to. So, anyway, get back to the chanter. So, first of all, we get a read. Normally, when we make a read, we make a read flatter than what we need to be, and we pitch it up to where we need to go. The chanters themselves, F is your pitch hole. So, when we're making a read, we make a read, balance the A's, and then check the F. Don't need to worry about any other notes at this stage. So get the A's balanced, check the F. If the S flat, which it should be if we make start off with the flat reads, this is trying to discover what the fundamental pitch of a chanter is. Um, at that point we'll also notice that the E is sharp. And that's just a function of conical instrument and whatever else, um, I'm not going to try and explain it now and if you want an explanation by Bernard's book on wind instruments um, he has very good graphs, tables and technical explanations and everything that you wanted to know and stuff that you really even didn't want to know are all in that book and it's useful if you're wired that way um, I'm not, I get that information of my brother who is wired that way and I just trust him because he trusts the book so we get the A's in, get the F in keep trimming the F up and as we trim sharpen the F the E comes down goes down so the F goes up the E comes down and where they bisect and that's called that's the um, F E bisect and at the F E bisect if you've got the A's balance and the F E bisect is even both notes are, are, are level the F and the E are, are the same pitch we will then be able to discover the fundamental pitch of the chanter so this read I'm using uh, Okay, it's about a 30 cents sharp C at A440. I'm just using a chromatic tuner for the, for the crow. It works exactly the same as with a cane reed. If you've got a cane reed and you want to know the pitch of it, the trouble with the cane reed is you get that skirl. You get the crow and you get that skirly crow. <laughs> and it's hard to hear a clean sound. Just put the reed into a manifold. Uh, any tube will do. I mean, this is just a, a manifold that I use for other purposes. but. Just put it into a into a bit of a seat, and then blow. It. Really, really clean sound, and you can see the pitch. So that's how you pitch your cameras. So when you're going along, when you know you've got a chanter that's all set up and it's working really well, take the reed out, crow it into there, then go along to your reed maker and go through his box of reeds and just pick all the reeds around about that uh, after uh, around that pitch that you're after and you won't have to buy truckloads of reeds to get the ones that suit you the only thing you have to worry about is, is the weight of the reeds that 
what you'd like. So, go back to this one. Okay, so I put it into the Makasa. I don't uh, blow the reeds, put my lips around. The software says it's a screw up doing that. You strip off too many overtones. Um, I don't make the software, the software is completely objective. It doesn't lie. I know lots of people do that and they say it's perfectly fine and it doesn't make any difference. Good on you. You can hear better than the software. The software can hear sounds that a dog can't sound, but if you can hear better than that, good on you. Um, I'll, I'll pat you on the back and tell you how wonderful you are. I prefer to trust the software. And the software says put your lips around here is better or put it in a manifold. I use the mild split stock. It's, it simulates what's going to be in your bag anyway. It simulates your chance of being in stock in your bag and it's a much more reliable reading on the software. So, try and balance the china. That's too hurt. So I'm, I'll live with that for now. I can make it lift that up a fraction. For those that want to get anal, but so now check my F. F's good. And the E's within the hurt, so that's fine. So chart to balance this one. That reed is working in that charter. Now we we just got them on pitch whatever it is, then we check to make sure that it's fundamentally correct. Now and this is why I talk about the fundamental pitch of the chanter. So this chanter here, we do it on the G, and we jump the octave on the G. And when you've jumped the octave, that should be the same as what the pitch was with you when your A's were in. So you've got your notes, your A's in. A's are in with your E. So that's your main notes in. Then by testing it against the G, I'm overlying the octave, you can see that it's it's within. So we know the fundamental pitch of that chant is around about 470, 471, which is probably right considering the age of it anyway, when it was made back then, that's probably what they're doing. Now we put that same read into the old chant, and this is a old McLeod as well, McLeod 4 far. It's got a, a lorry sort of sole on it, so it was obviously somebody's favourite 40 years ago or whatever it was, but anyway. So, it's a nice black with charter. It's a <laughs> now we can see that that's dropped on pitch quite a bit. That's about 465. So it's come down, you know, it's 5 hertz off the other McLeod. Check the E. Check there. What pitch notes gone to hell in a handcart? Oh, a bit surprised. The pitch of the reed is wrong for the chanter. Now, the pitch of the reed is right for this chanter, but the chanters have got internal differences. Now, how we know that is we make these up for all our chanters. We have new chanters anyway. And any new chanter gets one of these made up. These are bore mandrels. And what we do is make to fit the bore, it's exact tape with the bore, and then we put the whole locations on it. And stick that up the chanter, and then it's just binding nice. We can see the length that it's gone in, and we can see that the holes that we've drawn line up. Now, normally you'd lightly dust them with spray on a bit of foot powder or something, that leaves that nice. Bit of that, the white dusting on them and then you ram it up there and give them a bit of a twist and you can see the sort of shiny spots on it so you know what's going on so I put this in the old one and already we can see that it's going up to the second line so we know it's going to be flat a chanter and we can't see the holes anymore we can't see the circles because it's drew on the holes so this is going to be a flat a chanter we already saw that with the with the reed test and the throat is up higher on this one and that's why F's gone all bendy. Now that reed so it's about 30 cents sharp C to, to work in that charter would probably need to be about a guessing probably a 30 cents flat D. 
so the reed needs to be sharper. Sounds counterintuitive because there's an old flat chanter while you're making the reed sharper, but the only way to bring the F up is to shorten the reed. That's how it works. So I didn't invent the rule, it's just the rule. So as long as the aspect ratio you read is right, it'll tolerate being trimmed till the F comes up. And what we see is as the F comes up, the E goes down. And that's what I say, they'll, they'll join up that bisect, and once they're at the bisect, then we know that we've got the fundamental picture of the chanter. Now, uh, to make the point on the pitch, this is a newer chanter, this is a G1 chanter. Yeah, G1 chanter. So, this is a current band pitch chanter. Once again, keep the manifold on it when you do it. You can already see we're up to 484, same read that was 464 and the, the cloud is now 484 in the G1. <laughs> now it's a little bit sharp on the top end, so we'll have to flatten that off a bit. down which is consistent with the reed needing to be sharper so that's why we talk about the fundamental pinch pitch of a chanter and that's why it's important um, this is an old um, wall map now interesting wall map that by the side on this one here I've drilled another g-hole so there are people out there I don't know what they've been smoking, but they feel that it's reasonable to play tunes like Danny Boy on the GHB using the flat setter. Now, it just makes me want to puke on the shoes, especially being ill and Piper as well. It just, and there's a lot of other people, especially those singing along, it just makes them want to puke in their shoes. But look at warm up each other, you just you make the, just drill the second hole in it. So you now got the major G, and all you do is you move the tape down. So you want to play your GHB, cover up your major G hole, and now you're playing your flat seventh, your mixolydian, and everything's fine. You're playing your GHB stuff, your trad stuff. You want to play tunes like Danny Boy and not have people vomiting and writhing in the aisles, move the tape down, and now you're playing your, your G. It's your G, so it sounds, Danny Boy sounds almost passable on a GHB, although you'd be better off to play it on a lemon pub or something that's got the octaves and sounds, but, but anyway it gets rid of that horrible thing and for some reason the wall mat will stay in balance bouncing that tube tape back and forth so just by the by anyway, so put that reed in that chanter <laughs> But we know this chant is going to be around that 470 mark anyway, because of its age. main chant, we repair a lot of chanters, wood, blackwood chanters, and we rebuild the holes back to a factory spec. And one of the common chanters that we get is the Nile chanter. And the F, sometimes the F is half as big again, they've taken that much out trying to sharpen it up. And for some reason they just never figured out that they just had the wrong read. Now the good bands, they have read people working for them, they have a read now. The red tuner. 
He knows all this stuff. Ask him. He'll probably tell you. Um, but uh, gouging out your charter isn't the way to go. You're going to gouge out a, you know, a $400 charter over a $25 or $60 read. Pointless. Just get the right read. Get somebody to help you and, and get the right read. That's why the pitch of the read is so important. And that's why the fundamental pitch of your charter is so important. You have to know both and you have to get them to balance. Now if you want to play at 484, and bands I sort of understand, they want to go out there and deafen everyone. Solo people playing that, it's fingernails down the blackboard if you want my opinion. It just doesn't sound right and you lose that harmonic tied with your drones because you, the higher frequency you know, the, the, the peaks are much closer together so you're, you're losing a lot of the musicality although there's people out there that will say they like that sound and a lot of people like the thin squawky A that you get with cane um, so it's, it's a preference thing but once again if you want to get it all in balance you can but you've got to get the right read for the right chanter and you've got to know the, the right pitch of that chanter so, so basically I'm hoping that answers the questions or gives the reasons why I ask the questions I do and why it's quite difficult to get it right first time if I don't know exactly what pressure you're blowing it can be a little bit difficult as well if you're blowing harder than I expect the, the higher the pressure goes the synthetic reeds are better than the cane. The cane is a much steeper curve. You'll go up in pressure and your pitch goes up a lot steeper. The plastic doesn't go up as steep, but it does go up. And obviously your top hand's affected faster than your bottom hand when you're overblowing. So that's why it's important for me to know what pitch you want to play and what pressure you're playing. And sometimes there's a bit of guesswork. That's why it's easier to get the charter off. That's why I have so many pipers come around here uh, with their pipes and they set it up um, on the spot but for the sake of the questions I'm hoping that answers your questions and I'm hoping that demonstrates as to why these things are important and where those terms come from and why those terms are, are, are so relevant to the pipe um, okay thanks for watching and um, I'll do some um, other videos on some of the other points that we're uh, as I get the emails I'll do more videos to try and answer some of those questions as well okay thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.